Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at solving simultaneous equations. Uh, so if I look at my first example here, if I just look at the first equation, 5x plus 2y equals 16. Now I can't solve that just on its own because I've got two variables here, x and y. Okay, so what you need is to have two equations. So I've got this one here, like I just said, and this one here. So the x values are the same, and the y values are the same as well. Okay, so I'm going to solve these simultaneously, hence the name. Now, to do that, I've got two choices. I can add these two equations, uh, or I can take them away. And the idea of doing this is that we eliminate one of the variables. So either eliminate the x's, or eliminate the y's. Okay, so by eliminate, I just mean get rid of. The way, the, or little thing um, to help you choose which one to do is add or subtract. So if you've got two pluses like this, if you look over here, two pluses means we take away. So if the signs are the same, we take away, and if they're different, we add the equations. So in this particular case, because I've got two pluses, they're the same, I'm going to take the two away. If you're ever unsure or can't remember that, just do both and see which one uh, removes the variable. But in this case, I definitely know I'm going to need to take away. So I'll just draw my take away line there. 5x take away x is 4x. 2y take away 2y is nothing, that's why we do it, that's why we call it the elimination method. And then obviously then 16 take away 4 is 12. Okay, so by eliminating a variable, we now have a different equation, which is a lot easier to solve. Now, you can do it in your head, by all means do so. If you want to solve it using the balance method, by all means do so. Just have a look at my other video for that. But I'm going to solve these using the flow chart. So x times by 4, because remember 4x means time, uh, 4 times x. So x times 4 gets me 12. Go backwards, 12 divided by 4 gets me x, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we've just worked out that x is 3. Once you've done that, using the fact we now know x is 3, we can substitute it back into either the first equation or the second one. Doesn't matter, both will get you the same answer. In fact, that's how we'll check we've got the right answer at the end. Uh, I'm going to go with the top one, just for the hell of it. So. I've got 5 times x, but if x is 3, I'm going to be doing 5 times 3, because I'm going to substitute that 3 in for x. Then I've still got my 2y, and then I've still got my 16. So let's just work that out. 5 times 3 is 15. Then I've still got my 2y. Then I still have the 16. And again, by using the balance method or the flow chart, solve this. Again, I'm going to stick with the flow chart but you can use either one. So I've got y and I times it by 2 first. Then I add my 15. And then I get 16. So I go backwards, 16, take away 15, divide by 2, and I get back to y. So let's have a look. 16, take away 15 is 1. 1 divided by 2, just leave it as a fraction. 1 divided by 2 is obviously a half. So like I said, you can check whether or not you've got this right. So we've just substituted x into here, and uh, we've got y as a half, so let's just test it. 5 times 3 is 15, 2 times a half is 1, 15 plus 1 is 16, that works. Don't forget to test the other one. If x is 3, well that's just going to be a 3, 2 times a half is 1, 3 add 1 is 4. Okay, so both your x and y values should work in both the equations, so it's a way you can check it. Let's have a go at a slightly different ones. This time I've got a minus and a plus. Okay, so we're going to use uh, this little reminder over here. I'm going to add these two equations to eliminate the 3y. Notice that's a 3y, that's a 3y. They're both the same. That's the one that I want to eliminate. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to add these. So 7x plus 2x is 9x. Minus 3y plus plus 3y is obviously going to cancel out to nothing and then obviously 24 plus 3 is 27 okay so again we've eliminated the y just leaving us with x's a little bit of flow chart or um, if you can do it in your head by all means but x times 9 gets us 27 
going backwards, 27 divided by 9 gets us x, and therefore x is 3. Okay, and again, once you know that x is 3, substitute it back into either the top or the, uh, the bottom. I'm going to go with the bottom this time, purely because that's a minus 3 and this is a plus 3, so to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to use the bottom one here. Okay, but either would do, but the numbers might be a little bit nicer. So 2 times x, well x is 3, so 2 times 3 plus 3y, and then that equals 3. A little bit of simplifying, 2 times 3 is 6 plus your 3y, and obviously that all then stays the same. Again, a little bit of flow chart or solving using the balance method. Again, I'm going to stick with the flow chart. So I've got my y, I times it by 3, I add my 6, and then the answer is 3. Go backwards, 3, take away 6, divided by 3, gets me y. So 3 take away 6 is minus 3. Minus 3 divided by 3 is minus 1. Okay, so I've got my x value and my y value. Again, I'm going to substitute it in just to check. Well, you already know it's going to work for that one because we've just solved it, but let's just run it into this one. 7 times 3 is 21. Minus 3 times minus 1. Minus times minus is a positive. So that's going to give me 3. So 21 plus 3 is 24. Yeah, I've got it. Okay. So always check that you've done it right. And last one here, a bit of a tricky one because they're both negatives. I'll look at my little reminder over here. If they're both the same, I'm going to take the two equations away, which isn't necessarily obvious, but I'll talk why we do it in a minute. So 3x take away x is 2x. And this is why we do it. Minus 2y minus minus 2y. So when you take away a negative, remember it turns into an add. So what you're actually doing here is minus 2y plus 2y, which obviously will eliminate it and therefore remove it from the equation. And again, 25 uh, take away 11. Uh, yeah, take away 11 is 14. Okay. And again, you solve it. X, we times it by 2 and we get 14. Go backwards, 14 divided by 2, and as you might have already guessed it, x will therefore be 7. Again, put it into either one of these. Doesn't matter which, they're both negative here, so it's really not no real, no real benefit to either one. I'm just going to stick with the top one. So 3 times x, well x is 7, so 3 times 7 minus 2y equals 25. Okay. 3 times 7 is actually 21, minus 2y equals 25. And again, we'd solve this. Balance or flow, I'm going to stick with the flow chart. So y, remember that's times by minus 2. Not people forget that, but if it's minus 2 in front of the y, we times it by minus 2. So times by minus 2. We add 21, because it's positive. And we get to 25. Go backwards, 25 minus 21, divide by minus 2. There's lots of negatives here, isn't there? And we get back to y. Let's go through it. 25 minus 21 is 4. And then 4 divided by minus 2 will give us minus 2. And again, you can substitute that back in and check it. OK. So they're quite nice ones where we've got the y's the same, so 2y, 2y, 3y, 3y, 2y, 2y. So they're obvious ones to eliminate, okay? And using these rules, it's, uh, it's quite nice. However, it does get a little bit trickier. So I'm going to flip the page over here, and we're going to have a look at these ones. So you'll notice with this one is that I've got a 2x and a 5x and a y and a 3y. So nothing here, the y's, all the x's, nothing is the same. In which case, you can add or subtract these two equations, and it won't eliminate anything. You're still stuck in the same situation. However, we can get over this relatively easily. I've got a y, and I've got a 3y. I'm going to make them the same. To make them the same, I'm going to look at this top one here. What do I need to multiply to y to make it 3y? Well, that's easy. I just times it by 3. So as long as you times the whole equation by 3, it's fine, you can do that. So obviously 2x times 3 is 6x, y times 3 is the 3y, which is what we were after, and 5 times 3 is 15. I'm going to keep the bottom one the same, 
that's just 5x plus my 3y, and that still equals 12. And now these are the same. I can now do exactly the same thing I did on the previous page. Plus, plus, so they're the same. So I'm going to take the equations away. 6x, take away 5x is x. 3y, take away 3y is nothing, happy days. And then 15, take away 12 is 3. In this case, we're just left with an x. Well, x is 3, even better. Don't forget to substitute it back in. I'm going to go with the top one just because it's a little bit smaller numbers, just to make it a little bit easier. 2 times x, well, x is 3, so 2 times 3. Then I've got my plus y, then I've got my 5. Bit of simplifying. 6 plus y equals 5. Now, again, you might be able to do this in your head, but I'll just do a quick flow chart. I've got y, I add 6, and I get the answer of 5. So go backwards, 5, take away 6, left with y, or 5, take away 6 is minus 1. OK. And again, substitute those back in to check. It works. Uh, next one, then, I'm going to go below to this one here. And again, I've got 2y and a y, and a 3x and a 2x, so nothing's going to eliminate. I need to do a little bit of tinkering to make them the same. Well, all I've got to do is double y here to make that a 2y, and then they're the same. So let's do that. The top one will stay the same, because I'm not doing anything to that. And I'm going to times this whole equation by 2 to turn that into a 2y. So 2x times 2 is 4x minus the 2y. And then obviously 7 times 2 is 14. So now they're both 2y. I can now do what I did on the first page. I've got a plus and a minus, so I'm going to add these two equations. So 3x plus 4x is 7x. 2y plus minus 2y is nothing. Brilliant, that's what we wanted. And then 21 plus 14 is 35. Quick little flow chart, just as before. x, we times it by 7, we get 35. Go backwards, divide by 7, and we get back to x. 35 divided by 7 is 5, so x equals 5. Substitute that back in. Again, this one's a minus, so this one's a plus. To make it a bit easier and nicer, I'm going to go with the top one. 3 times x, well, x is 5, so 3 times 5 plus 2y equals 21. A little bit of uh, simplifying. 3 times 5 is 15, plus the 2y equals 21. Again, balance or flow chart. I'm going to go with flow chart. I've got my y, I times it by 2, then I add 15, and then I get 21. I go backwards, 21, take away 15, then I divide by 2, and I get y. So 21, take away 15 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. So I've got x is 5 and y is 3. Stepping it up just a little bit makes it a little bit harder again because I've got two negatives. But hopefully you could spot that again I've got two y here and y here. So if I double the top one, I'm going to have two y's, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to times the top one by two. Don't forget everything times by two. So 6x times two is 12x. Minus y times two is minus 2y. And then minus four times two is minus eight. And the bottom one stays the same. So 3x minus 2y equals 1. So again, these are now both 2y's, or sorry, I should say both minus 2y's. And because they're the same, remember, minus and a minus, just like if it was a plus and a plus, I take them away. So 12x take away 3x is 9x minus 2y minus minus 2y. So again, I'm taking away that negative, which is why it turns to a plus. So minus 2y plus 2y is obviously nothing. And then minus 8, minus 1 gives me minus 9. A little bit of flow chart. x uh, times by 9 gets me minus 9. Go backwards, minus 9 divided by 9 is x. So x is minus 1. So again, this is why it's a little bit trickier, a little bit harder. Probably won't see this in foundation because it's quite tricky, but they could throw it in there if they're feeling a bit mean. But if it's minus 1, 
put it back into here. And again, this is tricky, so you need to be very, very careful here. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you do. I'm going to go with the top one. Again, doesn't matter, the top or bottom. 6 times x. Well, x is minus 1, so I'm going to do 6 times minus 1. And I've got to take away y, and that's going to equal minus 4. OK. 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. Then I've got minus y, and again I've got minus 4. So there's lots of negatives here and lots of ways you could get this wrong. So be very careful. I'm going to use a flow chart again. Now it's minus y. Now lots of people forget to do this with the flow chart, which is why I picked this example. If it's minus y, you're actually doing y times minus 1. There's a subtle one there. We don't say minus 1y, we just say minus y. But there is a 1 there, so don't forget that. So when you're doing your flow chart, y times minus 1, and then we take away the 6, and we get minus 4. Go backwards, minus 4, add 6 this time, divide by minus 1, and we get back to y. So again, very fiddly here. Minus 4 plus 6 gives me 2, divided by minus 1. So 2 divided by minus 1 gives me minus 2. OK, so a very tricky one, that one, with lots of negatives. And finally, probably as, uh, as hard as it gets regarding the elimination method. Again, I've got an 8x here and a 3x. They're not the same. A 3y and a 2y. Again, not the same. And I can't double this or triple this or anything like that to make a match. So I'm going to have to change both of them. So have a look at the y's. I've got a 3y and a 2y. What's the smallest number that's in the 3 times table and the 2 times table? Well, it's 6. So I'm going to change them both to 6y, which means I have to times that one by 2 and times that one by 3. If I do that, they'll both be 6y, and I can carry on. So if I'm doubling this top one, I'm going to have 16x plus 6y equals 50. And then I'm going to times this whole one by 3. So I'm going to have 9x plus 6y uh, equals 36. They're both pluses and both the same, so I'm going to take the equations away from each other. 16 uh, take away 9 gives me 7x. 6y take away 6y is nothing. And then 50 take away 36 is 14. So again, you might be able to spot it, but I'll just do a very quick flow chart. x times by 7 gets me 14. 14 divided by 7 gets me x, so x in this case is going to be 2, because 14 divided by 7 is 2. I've got my x now, substitute it back into either top or bottom, doesn't matter which, I'm going to go with the bottom one because it's slightly smaller numbers, make it a little bit easier. 3 times x, x is 2, so 3 times 2, then I've got my plus 2y, then I've got my equals 12. A little bit of simplifying. 3 times 2 is 6. OK, and then just last but not least, well, the last thing, just flow chart it. So I've got y. I times it by 2. I then add my 6. I then get my 12. I then go backwards. And I take away 6. I divide by 2. And I get back to y. So 12, take away 6 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. So x is 2, y is 3. OK, lots of different examples there, some of them with tricky negatives. Uh, hopefully, though, with what you've done in class and uh, this little video, you, uh, it helps you with your revision or homework, whichever one you're trying to do. Thanks, guys.